So today, I went over to my friend Lyle's place to do an oil change. And uh, well, we ran into a few things as we got there. But anyway, come along with me and uh, let's see what happens. So, today we're going to do an oil change. Changing on the drain plug is really a funny oil pan underneath here, which is difficult to maybe see with a camera. 5 8 socket. Okay. So I usually drain this first. And doing the engine oil, you want to release the the um, the dipstick on the other side, and that allows air to uh, properly drain. So you always loosen the dipstick yeah, first. Yeah, right. Otherwise, it's okay. under it. There's a bit of a vacuum there, so you want to loosen, loosen that, and that allows it to, to drain well. It'll just kind of burp its way out. Get it out here. And 20 T27 torques on this. The primary oil. Primary oil drain plug sits right here in the primary. Oh, really? I, I see. I wouldn't have recognized once, that. Once again, 5 8 same. All plugs are the same size. So that's an easy one. And we'll let this drain for a while, too. Oh, stuff looks good in black. Well, primary oil, and you can see that debris on there. Oh, Get yeah. My finger out of the way. That's normal debris. That's just everything from clutch debris to possibly what might come off other surface areas in there but that's how much oil there. goes into the the okay, primary so a primary is is pretty well a liter you'll see when you put a liter in it'll come up right to the edge of the clutch hook and that's where the level should be okay um but pretty well a liter for these primaries uh, so you don't want to overfill this yeah I, I would stick to a liter nothing more so next step my special harley davidson Funnel here, if you want to follow it, that helps. Uh, yeah, that would be really hard to uh, the oil. put the oil in without exactly. that, wouldn't it? Yeah, you could do it's a lot of spillage. So, anyways, Formula Plus transmission and primary, and it'll take pretty well a full liter. That'll bring it up to the edge of the clutch hub. So, clutch basket, clutch hub, whatever you want to talk, call it, I should say. Well, the other thing too is you've got this lift, and it makes it so oh, much man, easier. Oh man, it's a freaking life, it's a life, absolute lifesaver. <laughs> you see down there where that oil comes right to the edge of the. Oh yeah, 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 there, yeah. I see right it. Right to the edge of the. Uh, yeah. All right, so that that's the uh, derby cover O-ring. Exactly. And this right. should be replaced every. Well, I've used these. You can use them time and time again. I will. We'll uh, replace this. And if you've got it. one with the kit, then change it. If you don't, yeah, if it's exactly. in good shape. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. I just figured it's it's easier than having a leak. Exactly. Plus, you get your old, you get your new engine, your new O-rings with it too. Right. So you see these little things here, these little neurals on here. They trap that seal so it doesn't fall out on you all the time. Gives it a bit of a friction. Holds it in there, eh? Putting on the new ones. Yep, the O rings. I'm in the kit. Now, 
Now something I also do is I put a little bit of pipe dope just on the beginnings of these threads. You, you don't okay. want to necessarily cover the, all the threads with that because it'll tend to push out against the O-ring and it compromises the O-ring. Right? And what is the purpose of the dope? Just an extra, um, uh, just an extra sealing. Okay. Uh, just gives it a little extra seal factor. Tend to push back as you thread that in, but stuff will get pushed back into the O-ring, and sometimes it oh, it's up through the threads. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it spreads the O-ring out. Eh? So I'm going to put the engine one back in first. I just want to turn it on best I can. I pull by feel because I've been doing it so long, but never use uh, never use the high end torque setting in the factory manual because you'll end up stripping that stripping that uh, the threads of the drain in, in the um, oil pan. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to torque the the uh, derby cover. Exactly. So we're going to yeah. and we're going to torque it. What do they torque to? Well, I usually uh, it's quarter twenty thread, so I use a standard of hundred inch pounds. Okay. That's a hundred inch pounds, not foot pounds. Inch so pounds. Exactly. Early oil filter, but I know you get into uh, some aftermarket filters. These do not mesh properly, with, okay. or they won't fit on at all. Right? Um, so if you're changing a Harley one, a Harley tool will work. Should work. Yeah, and yeah. now that one's got a hole in it. What is the hole? So this cavity, this cutout here, is to clear your crank position sensor. Okay. So it's difficult to get this in without this cutout here in the crank position sensor. On the older bikes, the older crank position sensors sit considerably higher, which makes it even more difficult. This is more of a low profile on the, um, on the newer style bikes. Eh? Okay. But sometimes on the older ones, especially if some guys use aftermarket filters, I've had to pull the crank position sensor actually out to get the oil filter off. Okay. You know, so but in this case it should not be an issue. So it's all cut out which in there like that. Now I usually try and put my and sometimes this works and sometimes it is less effective but try and contain the oil. Some guys use cardboard all sorts of apparatuses and all this you can buy. So is that a Harley Davidson thing? Is that something you made? Well, no, this is a Harley one, but you can get these on Amazon or any place. You know. um, they do a reasonable job at containing the oil, but it's uh, it can still turn into a messy. So we've gotten the oil out of the bottom of the engine. This is just what's left in the filter. This is just the filter stuff, exactly. Oh, okay. Right. So we can change this. Too many, too many uh, oil catchers and <laughs> yeah, trap there. So, anyways, now I try and get this spun off. You have an oil cooler on here, so it's a bit more restrictive. But I try and keep it tilted. 
I mean, this is an impossibility. But there we go. All right, and the oil filter's out. Okay. Well, that did a pretty good job. We didn't do too bad. I always clean have to clean up after, though. You know, it's, uh, so there's the filter. Oh. And that just pops right off. <laughs> that is a Harley one. Oh, it's coming off. There you go. There it is. All right. There's no difference between a chrome one and a black one. No, nope, it's just purely color. Mm -hmm. We pay more for chrome. I just like the way it looks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, something, and I've seen this before where people use an older filter on a twin cam motor, something that's made for an Evo motor. You see this membrane in here? Yeah. This orange? That's a bleed back valve. So the oil doesn't bleed out, bleed out of the filter back into the engine cab. Okay. So I've seen that before where guys use the wrong, or vice versa. A lot of times they use a twin cam motor, a uh, twin cam filter on a Evo motor. And um, is that a bad thing? <laughs> well, it restricts. Yeah, it's not a. It's not a good. It's not a good thing for an Evo motor. Exactly. It's just a flow issue, and so yeah, just a little tidbit of information. That's what that is. It's a bead back uh, in, inside the car. Right, learning lots of things today. Okay. Refill them. It just. It just. Um, If you don't, it, it takes a while for that to fill up, and it tends to starve the um, tends to starve the lifters for a while. So, so the more what you, oil you can get in the system. What are you doing there? You're you're running your finger across that. I'm just lubricating the uh, the oil ring on here, eh? just right. so it doesn't. Uh, sometimes when you put them on dry, they'll they'll seal up hard, and they're very difficult to get off. So. So yeah, so the more oil you can get into the system right away, the better, the less your lifters are going to starve, eh? So, um, sometimes when you have an empty oil filter like that, you'll, when you first start up, you'll hear your lifters clattering for a few seconds, and, and uh, well, try to slide that in there and not lose yeah. too much oil. The oil cooler tends to really make it tight in here. Now this is supposed; these oil filters are supposed to go on hand tight, but I can't get a good grip on things, anymore, so I just do a little tweak with the. Uh, so we just sort of the wrench, like here. a quarter turn or half yeah, turn. Yeah, just to kind of verify it's. Uh, I, you know, I would agree. Regardless, I, regardless of what you're using, I've opened these motors up with 150,000 K on them, yeah. and really, I don't see any more significant wear than maybe somebody who's running AMS oil. I like AMS oil because yeah, and you know what? Run cooler. I I that's think I think that it, it, that's a really good point. You just should just run what what you want and a and make a recommended motorcycle. Oil. oil like everybody's got their it's made basically for an air cool motor right you know it has particular additives in it and and stuff like that that's 
that uh, helps an air-cooled engine that runs hotter than a liquid-cooled one of those. So. When we're not filming, I got a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, my question is is uh, about engine oil. If you were on the road and you were out of oil, where would you find motorcycle oil? Oil's oil, man. That's what uh, I want to know. Absolutely. If you're in desperate need, like most times, you can get some sort of 20W50 at a parts, like a, a And that's all you'd need. Parts store. And that's, that, when it comes to that, oil is oil. Um, so if, if my engine oil were low and I was on the road, yeah, exactly. uh, just a 20W50 would be fine. 20W50 is... Until I could get proper motorcycle oil. Exactly. But if to top it up, it wouldn't make any difference. Exactly. Yeah. Um, one thing, nice thing about riding a Harley is you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a Harley dealer. That's <laughs> true enough. <laughs> <laughs> so you're usually within at least an hour or two from a Harley dealer, no matter where you go away. Eh? Yeah, and that, that, yeah, that, is, that is the biggest reason why I wanted a Harley. Um, if you go on a long trip, you know that you're going to be able to get service. Exactly. If there's certain certain brands out there that you're lucky if there's a dealership in the state, mm -hmm. one, there might be one dealership in the state. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm not necessarily a fan of these big containers because I tend can't to get them in. But you just got to take it slow, eh? How much engine oil goes into? So on these twin cams, I find it's usually around three and a half in that area there on a wet motor. So nothing going out the bottom. That's a good thing. <laughs> <coughs> I have done that once. Forgot to put the drain plug in. Mm -hmm. It was on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive oil change. I finally realized that after I my foot was getting so we're going to fill. Out. This is the engine oil. We're going to refill. Oil. I'm just going to put that in there. But we don't tighten it down, so we remember that there was an oil in it. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, So today, because I bought the oil, and I know a lot of people have different opinions on oil, but my bike has always had the Harley-Davidson stock oil, and that's what I've done ever since I've bought it. We're almost there, dude. I just okay. want to let this drain in, and then we'll check it one more time. And I think... Probably going to be very close. The quality of the phone video is awesome. And what I was going to say, those Green Squad guys that make all this money. We do all of their videos. So you see, that's exactly where I like to see it. You see that's two ticks down from the full hot vehicle upright? Yeah. That's where I like to keep it. So it just allows you a little more expansion room in there. And um, helps keep that breather from getting too wet. Now I'm going to drain the transmission. Um, this is your tranny dipstick here. Okay, which, I did not know that. Which I think... Is there actually a dipstick on it? Yep. No way! So yeah, there's a tranny dipstick here. Well, see. Holy crap. I there's would... actually oil on it, which is a good thing. I had no idea that was even there. <laughs> Yeah, some kind of a Harley guy I am. <laughs> well, at least you're right. 
<laughs> it's not sitting in the garage. That's right. So anyways, I'm going to drain the tranny oil and let that drain while we're pre-filling this. Here. Okay, so how... Okay, so the tranny, we've already put the cap back in. Did we? No, we haven't. We got to take, we got to drain it, right? Yes, we have. Where is it? Where is the drain? change on a 2012 103 twin cam.